Folks, today we are going to be reading the poem Two Names, Two Worlds by Jonathan Rodriguez. This poem can be found on page 21 of your To Kill a Mockingbird unit packet, so please flip to page 21 at this time. While you're doing that, today we're going to be defining four poetic um, or literary devices. We're going to be reading the poem Two Names, Two Worlds, and we're going to annotate that poem Two Names, Two Worlds for examples of those devices. The four terms that we're going to go over today are repetition, hyperbole, personification, and a metaphor. You can write these definitions in your packet on page 100, let's see, 107 and 108. So repetition, our first device, is going to be the action of repeating something that has already been said or written in poetry, the repetition of words or phrases. So Two Names, Two Worlds is going to have lots of examples of this, so we'll get into purposeful use of repetition, repetition when uh, we read the poem. Our second device, hyperbole, is just extravagant exaggeration. Um, personification is the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristic to something that's non-human, um, so giving something that's not living or not human, giving it human-like characteristics. And our last device is metaphor. It's a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or action, which it is not literally applicable. Um, take a moment, write these down uh, in your packet, pause the video if you have to at this time. I'll read through it once all the way through and then we'll go back and annotate after that. And a heads up, I will probably mispronounce things Please do not hold it against me. All right, two names, two worlds. Hi, I'm John. No, Jonathan. Wait, Jonathan Rodriguez. Hold on, Jonathan Rodriguez. My name, two names, two worlds. The duality of my identity, like two sides of the same coin, with two worlds. There should be plenty of room. But where do I fit? Where can I sit? Is this seat taken, or is that seat taken? There's never quite enough room, is there? Two names, two worlds. Where do I come from? Born in the Washington Heights of New York City, but raised in good old Connecticut, the smell of freshly mowed grass, autumn leaves, sancocho, rice, and beans, the sound of Billy Joel's piano keys, and the rhythm from Juan Luis Guerra. I'm from the struggle for broken dreams, of false promises, of houses with white picket fences and 2.5 kids. The mountains and Campos de la República Dominicana and the mango trees. I'm not the typical kid from suburbia, nor am I a smooth Latin cat. My head's in the clouds, my nose in a comic book. I get lost in the stories and art. I'm kind of awkward, so talking to the ladies is hard. I listen to Fernando Villalona and Aventura every chance I get, but don't make me dance meringue, bachata, or salsa. I don't know the steps I've learned throughout the past years. I'm a mix of cultures, a mix of races, Una raza encendida, negra, blanca, y taina. You can find me in the parts of a song, and una canción. You can feel my African roots, and la tam tambora. Uh, my taino screams, and la gira. And the melodies of the lyrics are a reminder of my beautiful Spanish heritage. I am African, taino, and Spanish. A fanboy, an athlete, a nerd, a student, an introvert. I'm proud to say, yo soy dominicano. I'm proud to say, I am me. I'm beginning to appreciate that I am, una bella mezcla. I'm beginning to see that this world is also a beautiful mix of people, ideas, and stories. Is the seat taken, or is that seat taken? Join me and take a seat. Here, we'll write our own stories. I am only going to be underlining one or two examples of each of these things, and I will give you guys a chance to pause and look for more examples, okay? So the first one on our list is the purposeful use of repetition. And again, that just means where do we see repetition? Repetition could be of words, of phrases. Usually authors or poets will repeat the things that they want emphasized. The first thing that I noticed after reading this poem, what was being repeated? Two names, two worlds, it came up there at the very beginning. Two names, two worlds came up again towards the beginning. Purposeful. 
repetition. Okay, so go ahead and on your copy on page 21, do the same thing. Underline or highlight, and to the side, please write purposeful repetition. And I am abbreviating just to make things quick. So I want you to pause the video, go through the poem, see where else you see purposeful use of repetition. Our next device is hyperbole, so we're going to look for a place in this poem where the author is exaggerating. I had a little bit of trouble uh, identifying this, but after reading through the poem a couple different times, I thought here we saw some exaggeration. When the author says, my head's in the clouds, my nose in a comic book. So is the author's head actually in the clouds? Is, is their nose actually touching the comic book? No. Um, are they actually getting lost in stories? No. So here we've got exaggeration. So I'm going to highlight that and write hyperbole. Okay, so our next device is personification. And personification is when uh, a non-living or a non-human thing is given human characteristics. Um, so one place where I felt like I saw a non-human thing getting human characteristics was right here. My Taino screams and Lagira. Taino is one of his, you know, cultural identities, and Gira is, if we look in the packet on page 22, uh, it's a type of percussion instrument used in merengue or merengue. I'm not sure how you say that. Um, so his identity, right, like this facet of his identity is not living, right? It's not a person, um, yet it's screaming. Okay, so that is personification. Something that's not human is given a human quality, screaming. So I'm going to write personification on the side there. The final device that we're going to be looking for is metaphor. Um, so, sorry, looking at the definition of metaphor, a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object to which it's not literally applicable. I think what I would add to this definition is that metaphors are also comparisons between two objects. Um, I think you guys are familiar with similes, right? Simile being a comparison between like, uh, between two objects using the words like or as. And we definitely have a simile in this poem up here, the duality of my identity, like two sides of the same coin. Similes are a type of metaphor, so I'm gonna go ahead and underline that. He's comparing his identity to a coin, which has two sides, right? So his identity has multiple sides as well. Um, with metaphor, I think I would also highlight this whole section here. So with two worlds, there should be plenty of room, but where do I fit? Where can I sit? Is the seat taken or is the seat taken? There's never quite enough room, is there? So here, um, our poet is trying to explain what it feels like, right, to have, to be a part of multiple worlds, to have an identity that is complex. And he's like, but I'm not really sure where I fit and where, where I can sit. Is this seat taken here? Um, he's trying to illustrate that um, complexity um, using this sort of image right of like not being able to sit somewhere um, so that sort of comparison i think we can also uh, label as a metaphor okay so at this point we have defined our four poetic slash literary devices we've read two names two worlds we've annotated for a couple um, of examples of the four devices now you guys are going to finish the work on your own. So finish annotating the poem. Hopefully you've done that just now. Uh, you're going to answer the questions on page 23 of your packet, and there will be a post on Schoology, a discussion post where we'd like for you guys to answer the question thoughtfully. And then lastly, writing and annotating your own two names, two worlds poem. And that is on page 24. So let me just write those in there. Page 
24 for that, page 23 for those questions. Um, and with your poem, you are writing it and you are annotating it. So just like what we did here with the Two Names, Two Worlds poem, we annotated for the repetition, for metaphors, for hyperbole, for personification. When you write your own poem, we'd like you to do the same, okay? So highlighting or underlining and telling us what device is being used. If you have any questions, reach out to your LA teacher. Um, whoops, sorry. Reach out to your LA teacher. Uh, we'd be happy to clarify whatever whatever questions you may have. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.